Hey everyone, uh, welcome back to Cybersecurity TV. Uh, today we're going to talk about the webcast partitioning. Uh, this is a very popular or advanced technique where an attacker exploits the behavior of the web server and cache so that a harmful HTTP response is served to the other users. I'm sure you have heard this vulnerability several times, but probably like you know might not know in depth. So that's the intention behind this demo. We're gonna see how the web cache works, how the poisoning works, and we'll also see a demo or example of how this vulnerability could be exploited. Uh, so fundamentally, it involves two steps, right? The poisoning. First, you have to identify a, a, a vulnerable parameter or a header where you can inject your payload or request which will be cached by the server and then how you can uh, transfer or distribute that vulnerable cache or poison cache to the other users or the victim. Uh, so let's first understand and, and like you know see okay how does the web cache work. So uh, here we have a first request so let's say uh, that there is a single user who wants to send a request or access something or uh, static elements on the website. Uh, let's assume that. So it sends a request to the website and then website responds uh, to that request. Uh, now the next time what website is going to do if you have set up your CDN, what it's going to do is it's going to cache this response into the cache server. So next time when the user sends the request, it's actually the response is going to be uh, like you know from the uh, cache server and not the actual website. It's not going to go to the actual website. Rather, it's just going to go to the cache. And this is uh, very intentional because a uh, website wants to uh, like you know shed some load off from the actual web server because if you have millions of users requesting the same content, it's not scalable to have the web server response to each and every request. So that's why we have the cache. So every like you know uh, future request will be served by the cache server until the cache is expired, and that's again a different like you know flag which is set, uh, or the content has been modified. So sometimes you would see like you know three zero four not modified, or you would see the response actually came from the cache server, and not the website when you're browsing or when you're testing a site. So this is in a nutshell how the how does the cache work. Now let's understand what the cache keys are. So this is an important uh, concept to understand if you want to exploit the uh, cache poisoning. So the cache key, uh, it's just like you know uh, your regular key, your house key or your car key. It's made up of some identifier. So for example, your home key uh, or like you know your remote uh, key or your remote control of the TV or something is is based on certain identifier of uh, how it's going to be connected with that TV or, or, or any any device. So similarly, a cache key is typically like, you know, consist of some request line and some headers. Uh, in this example, let's say there's a, every request has a request like get or post, and then there's a host header, right? So the cache key web server will determine uh, the cache key is request line plus host. So every time when the request comes in, if the request line and the host is same, the value of the these parameters or the headers are the same, then the response will be served from the cache. But if there is any difference, it's going to go to the website, right? So as we saw in the previous example, if the key, so if we go back here, say so if the key is same, so value of the uh, query or the host and the uh, URL is the same, then it's going to go to the cache. If it's different, then it's go to the website. So that's the cache key. Now if we take a look at this example in this one, uh, get images and host server security and then there's a cookie header. Now website would determine, okay, in this case, if uh, the request comes from get images and the host is cybersecuritytv.com, then that would be counted as a cache key and combination of those will determine whether the response should be served from the cache or from the, uh, of course, the website. Now, the critical part is like, how do you find a vulnerability? Uh, how do you know that whether this is a, uh, there is a ca web cache poisoning attack or vulnerability possible to the website you are testing, right? So, uh, any web cache poisoning attack relies on manipulation of the unkeyed input. So we saw what the cache key is. Now the rest of the thing, 
is unkeyed. So in our previous example, cookie, which was not part of the cache key, is an unkeyed value. So if you change something here, and there is, for example, there is a change in the response as well based on the change in any of the header, cookie, or anything else, then that is called unkeyed uh, input parameter, right? And I'll explain you why this is important uh, in the later section and also uh, when we see the demo. Uh, but yeah, so usually uh, what happens is you need to identify the unkeyed input. Now, you can do it manually, so every time you can uh, send a request to the Burp repeater and then you change the value of each and every headers and parameters and see how the response uh, is observed, or whether there is a change, whether there is not, not a change, there might be a subtle change. So you can also take a, uh, take a use of Burp Comparer, which is uh, useful for comparing the response, right? So that's that's an easy way to do it as well. But then even easier way is to use the param minor, uh, which is an extension uh, you can use in the from the Burp store. I have installed it and, and I'll also show you <coughs> how to use it. But this is uh, one of the uh, and this is recently this was recently updated I guess a couple of weeks ago or a couple a uh, few weeks ago, and it has also got a good review uh, rating. So I'm I'm assuming this is a good tool. I haven't. I mostly rely on the manual test, and sometimes I use this tool, but yeah, mostly it's the manual testing where I rely on. Uh, so we'll see how 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 uh, like you know th to use this tool, but yeah, the goal of this param minor tool is to find uh, uh, headers or the parameters which are not part of the cache key. Now let's say once you find out what the key is, your goal is to find what response, uh, uh, like, you know, what the response changes based on the input that you provide to these unkeyed parameters or headers, and whether those responses are sanitized or not, and whether you can cache those responses or not, right? So now uh, what's going to happen is, let's say, uh, the request will be sent uh, by the attacker first, right, uh, to the website, and it will, uh, in our previous example, as we saw, uh, the cache key was made up of uh, URL and the query string, uh, sorry, the host header, and the cookie was the unkeyed uh, value. Now, let's assume um, uh, this attacker uh, modified the value of the cookie, and now uh, website send the response back, and the response, they reflect the cookie value back, or they, they provide some response which is based on the cookie value provided by the attacker. Now this response will be cached for like you know if the request is if the other user sends the same request with the same URL and the same host header, now they will uh, get the response from the cache server, but the cache response will be what the attacker has sent in the cookie value. Uh, don't worry if this doesn't make sense right now, but yeah, uh, this is very important to understand. So if the attacker sends in the cookie value alert, alert uh, script alert one to three, the response of that request will be cached in the cache server and any new user will be requesting it. Even though they do not send this payload, they'll still be getting the alert box in the response. Right? And that will happen uh, for the future users until the cache expires. Now the example uh, I would show you is this one. So. Let's say there's a GET request, and uh, there's a host, cybersecurity.com, and then there is a X forwarded host, which is where has the value goodweb.com. Now, just assume the GET and, uh, sorry, the, the uh, request and the host is the cache key. And based on the request, the application gives the response, and here the re response contains, like, you know, PS goodweb.com, which is value of this goodweb. like, you know, X forwarded host but which is not part of the cache key. Now what attacker can do is, because this is not part of the cache key, it will inject this script into the X forwarded host and response uh, of this uh, request is going to be this, which is, of course, content would be modified. So instead of this goodweb.com, it will be uh, attacker script. 
and now this is cached. So anytime any new users make a request to the same URL and the same host, then it will he will he or she will get this response, even though they have not put the X forwarded host to this value, right? Now the important thing to understand in this context is what is X forwarded host. So it's a header is a de facto standard header for identifying the original host requested by the client in the uh, host HTTP response request header. So this header is typically used for debugging statistics and generating location-specific dependent content. And by design, it exposes privacy-sensitive information, such as IP address, right, of the client. Uh, therefore, like, you know, uh, it's always it's always the case that you will not find this header uh, typically in any website. Now let's take a look at the demo of what I meant by how you can do this. So uh, I'm, I'm using uh, uh, the Burp, uh, like you know, Burp has a lab uh, for this one, and I'm also gonna put that link into the description. But Burp has a several labs for exploiting this web cache poisoning, but we're gonna take a simple example for this time. So suppose this is a request uh, of a website uh, so first off, what you want to do is you want to send it to the repeater. So once you send it to the repeater, uh, now you want to see, uh, you want to f find out w which of this parameter is not part of the cache key. Now, as I said, you can use uh, the burp extender, uh, paraminer. Uh, this extension identifies hidden unlinked parameters. It's particularly useful find finding web cache Poisoning vulnerabilities. It's updated recently uh, for September, and it's easy to use. So, for example, any uh, request that you capture, you uh, do the right click, and then you do guess headers. It will come up the screen, and here it will say, okay, which headers and and what attacks and you want to perform. But simple going through it, like you know, include origin cache buster use the basic word list which is already uh, stored or uh, like you know provided by this add-on then identity probe the identified parameters yes try cache poisoning of course uh, then rotation increment so you can keep it default or you can check uh, based on like you know after you go through this uh, I'm not gonna go through each and every uh, but they also have a help section in case you have a question so that's a one way to do it, uh, and so you just and once the uh, let's say uh, once it's able to identify the problem, it's gonna show you uh, possible web crash poisoning into uh, this uh, like you know in this section. So for example, once you scan it, it it will say whether it's a possible for the web cache poisoning or not. Uh, so if we send this request. And we observe the response. Uh, of course, you would have to, like, you know, spend some time to observe the response. But since I've already done this, you could see this script uh, tag, and the value or the source of the script tag is based on the host header, right? As we can see here, uh, it matches with this. You can simply do this, and it matches the script as uh, 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 source header. Now, what if the attacker is able to manipulate the location where the script is pulling up from? So if I can point this to my server, and this script would be included in the web server, from which is vulnerable, of course, because it's from my server, and it's going to exploit uh, the system. right? So for that, what you can do is you can put the X forwarded host header, and... For the simplicity, let's just do the local host, right? And now, as we can see here, this is actually coming up like the script is being loaded from the local host. Uh, now, of course, you want to, you can also include like a script tag, right? You can also uh, do some uh, 10.0.0.1.15 and then you will server and like you know scripts you can load some scripts from here so you can do all those sort of things and ultimately what's going to happen is uh when this is going to be cached as you can see right now the cache is missed but let me change it back to the local host so we can i can demonstrate the uh this one 
So right now the uh, response is still coming uh, from the website rather than the cache server. Let's send the request again. Now it's a hit. That means now I'm getting the response from the cache server. So this response, now anyone sends the request with this URL or the host and this uh, query string will receive the script from uh, my local host rather than the one hosted by this website. And here uh, you can do uh, you can exploit vulnerabilities like cross-site scripting injection, JavaScript injection, uh, which we just did. Then open redirection. You can redirect the users to a malicious site. So all of these things uh, would be possible, uh, like you know, using this thing. So uh, this was the demo I want to show you, like how the cache poisoning attack really works and what the cache poisoning is. Uh, let me know if you have any questions in the comment section down below. I have also included the links to the Burp Labs, so you can also try it yourself. It's I think it's free. You don't need to pay anything for that. Uh, so it's definitely worth trying. Uh, also, uh, let me know if you have any other, uh, like you know, if you want to learn any any other attacks, I, I can try and demonstrate that to you as well. Uh, please subscribe to my channel, hit the thumbs up if you like this video, and I'll see you guys next week. Bye.